Hello food fans, today I'm going to have bacon and tomato sandwiches and the tomatoes that I'll be using will be from the garden. Uh, two tomatoes from the garden for a couple of uh, tomato and bacon, bacon and tomato sandwiches. And I'm going to be using Morningstar vegetarian bacon strips. I like that very much. And I'll also fry up about one third of the potato in vegetable oil. So this will be a meatless meal, I guess, as far as I can tell so far. Um, and I also will tell some stories, some stories about uh, my ten best scenes in Hollywood movies, actual feature films, the ten best scenes, in case you are searching for some place where you can see me in the background in a movie. I've worked as a movie extra for more than 25 years, so there are a few uh, scenes that are okay to uh, display and I think you will enjoy seeing them. But right now I'm getting hungry so let's get started. Well it looks good and I know it's hot The uh, and it's also hot outside today but uh, pretty nice in here and we are expecting rain later today potatoes. These are fried potatoes. Keep the kids away from the stove when you're cooking anything and the same applies to the microwave. We, we use both to prepare this meal. I use a microwave for the bacon strips and I use a frying pan for the potatoes. Potatoes are hot, so I'll put a little bit of mustard and relish onto the bread, the toast, shake it so the mustard won't come out as water. A little bit of mustard on the bread and a little bit of relish on the bread. And I will be talking about some movie scenes that I was in when I was a movie extra in Hollywood. And uh, I'll show you some screen caps from some of those movies. I got to work with a lot of wonderful people in Hollywood. Most of the actors and directors are very nice people. And I'm going to put a tomato slice onto the... These tomatoes are from my garden. So these are garden fresh tomatoes. And... Wait, oops. Almost dropped it. And... Put that there. And I'll put the bread on top of it. But first I'll have a spoonful of coleslaw. And this uh, came from Aldi's coleslaw. They have a low price on fresh salads. They have macaroni salad, they have potato salad, and they have coleslaw. And I get all three. big fan of coleslaw and we'll put some bacon onto the sandwiches and give it a test here taste test Morningstar Farms vegetarian bacon it tastes like bacon I would rec recommend it if you're making bacon and tomato sandwiches. Tomatoes are also good. Get my 
cheat sheet here. First movie I'll talk about is Bug Buster. Bug Buster was a sci-fi movie about giant roaches. And I was a member of the band Trailer Park Trash. We sang two songs in the movie Bug Buster. I'm playing the keyboard. I'm in the back on the right. And Melba Toast and Johnny Legend sang the songs. And Melba and Johnny and I and lots of other people used to appear at the Palomino Club in North Hollywood uh, just about every week. Bacon tomato sandwich is quite good. Bug Buster is not a great movie, but it is fun. I got to work with some of the Star Trek people. James Doohan, Scotty. And lots of familiar character faces in the background. And uh, we recorded two songs and then lip synced the songs in the movie. Very hot day, 103 degrees outside probably 110 degrees inside where we were shooting because we couldn't turn on the air conditioner, it made too much noise. But it was fun. We were around the Star Trek people like James Doohan. We also were blessed with uh, familiar character faces that uh, appear in the, throughout the movie. We had Bernie Coppell there on the set. Needless to say, it was a nice, pleasant job. Time for some root beer. Beer is always good. Next movie I'll talk about is Crossroads with Ralph Macchio. I was a bartender in a scene with Harry Carey Jr. Harry Carey Jr. is in the center, I'm on the right. And that was a nice movie to work. Got to talk with Harry Carey Jr. about some of his uh, movies. He worked in a lot of John Wayne westerns. His dad Harry Carey Sr. was a very famous cowboy movie star of the 1930s. I didn't have any conversations with uh, Ralph Macchio. He seemed nice on the set. In Deal of the Century, I was a colonel. Richard Hurd was giving some sort of uh, demonstration in a boardroom, and I was listening. I'm on the right. And that uh, movie worked in uh, Santa Barbara. I think I was up there for three days working on that. Bacon and tomato. Very, very good. Next movie I'll talk about, History of the World Part 1 with Mel Brooks. I was a senator, you can see the senators walking up the stairs from the establishing shot 
that's the uh, Rome as it looked many centuries ago. And then you have a close-up of the senators walking in, and I'm one of the senators there on the left. First thing Mel Brooks ever said to me, I was walking up those stairs to um, do a rehearsal. Mel Brooks was at the top of the stairs, and he kept moving back and forth. If I would go to the right, he would go to his left. He, he stayed right in front of me. When I finally got to the top of the stairs, Mel Brooks said to me, My God, you're tall. Then he said, Let's put an Abe Lincoln beard on him. And we'll have the senators walking by camera. We'll have someone say, Good morning, Senator Julius. Good morning, Senator Claudius. Good morning, Senator Lincoln. And he said, No, 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 it's too funny. So he left the scene as it was, but he was a fun person to work with. He was very, very funny all day long. In Psycho 2, Psycho 2 I was A grave digger. I'm the grave digger on the right at the top. And we actually were lifting a coffin out of the ground. It had a real human skeleton in it. The human skeleton came from India. They were not allowed to use a United States skeleton. So they used the skeleton from India. It was the skeleton's third movie. They actually have rules like that in the movie business. Time for some root beer. And while we worked on the movie Psycho 2, we were at Universal, and there was a tram came by. That's one of the trains that's sort of like a bunch of golf carts hooked together into a train. And tourists are tour taking the tour of Universal. And the tram came by, and we stopped shooting while the tram came by. And Tony Perkins motioned for the tram driver to stop, and he walked over and talked to the tourists who were in the tram, signed some autographs, and talked to the people for a little bit, and came back. And he was talking, he talked to me, to everybody on the set. He was a nice person. And Psycho 2 is a pretty good movie. I recommend it. Fried potatoes are quite good. Potatoes are good just about any way you fix them. Naked Gun, the movie itself is so great, I just have a small scene where I'm visible in the background. Leslie Nielsen has just shot some bullets into a car that almost ran over him, and he's not aware that it was his own car.
Pee Wee's Big Adventure. They did a close up of my face. Tim Burton was the director. And it happened that uh, the total amount of time we spent on the set that day went past 16 hours. Which meant <clears throat> I received a day's pay for every hour after 16 hours. So that was quite a lucrative job for me, and Pee Wee was wonderful to work with. And here's Pee Wee in the drive in movie scene. The car on the far right, the yellow car with the mirror on the fender, that's my Rambler. My Rambler got me work in lots of movies. And here we see the same Rambler. This is a bonus picture. I'm not even in the picture. Clint Eastwood from Heartbreak Ridge. Clint Eastwood asked a question of uh, those of us who were sitting down. He said, who owns the Rambler? I said, I do. He said, I want you to park it right over here. He showed me where to park it. He said, I want that right in the center, right in front. He said, that car has character. The Rambler was my yellow blur. It did work a lot in lots of movies and TV shows. Bacon tomato sandwich. What's the next one here? Oh, Star, Star Chamber. I, I was at Dodger Stadium, one of 200 people, extras, working in a scene watching the Dodgers play baseball, Star Chamber. And even with all those people there, I was still very prominent in front. They just happened to place me where I was more visible than Hal Holbrook, Holbrook, who's in the same scene. That's a good movie. Grease 2. Grease 2, I was a bowling alley manager. It was a pleasure to work with Maxwell Caulfield and all the wonderful people at Greece too, the actors, the dancers, the director Patricia Birch. And I think uh, Grease 2 is a pretty good movie. Well worth watching. Potatoes are quite good. Airplane 2. I was a dipstick patient. They're checking my blood level with a dipstick. They're in a scene in the mental hospital. And then in the same scene, you see the other side of the bed. I'm one of the people who commits suicide when the character decides to, well, the doctor says, go ahead, uh, tell us more, continue the story, and we all shoot ourselves. And the best scene I've ever had in a movie was in Melvin and Howard. I kissed Mary Steenburgen. We did the scene four times. They wanted to do it with 
the cowboy hat without the cowboy hat with rice hitting the cowboy hat and with no rice hitting the cowboy hat. Mary Steenburgen won the Academy Award for that movie. Great working with her. We did that in 1979 in Las Vegas. Let me show you what my dessert is. This is a cherry fruit bar. It's vegan, non-GMO, non gluten-free. And they say it tastes like cherry pie. Give this a try. Mm -hmm. It tastes like cherry pie. This is very good. 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 Thank you for watching.